Hi and welcome back. In this video, we're going to work through two examples of finding a bunch of information about a rational function. So let's try this out on our function f of x, which is equal to x plus 1 times x minus 2 divided by x minus 2 times x plus 3 times x minus 5. Let's start with the vertical asymptotes and the holes, but we're also going to find the horizontal asymptotes, the vertical and horizontal intercepts, and the domain. So I like to find the vertical asymptotes and the holes kind of at the same time because they're related to each other. So the vertical asymptotes occur when we just have dividing by zero, so where the denominator is zero, while the holes are when we have zero over zero. So looking at the function, I'm seeing that zero over zero is going to occur at this term x minus two, that's in both the numerator and the denominator. So if we have this x minus two term, that's what's making both the numerator and the denominator equal to zero. Then the x plus three and the x minus five term are what makes just the denominator equal to zero. So those are for our vertical asymptotes. So starting with the holes, I need to solve x minus two equals zero. And so I add that two over to the other side and I get x equals two. So this is where the hole in the graph occurs, and you can sort of check this for yourself by substituting in two to those terms. You'll see two minus two is zero, and so we're getting a zero in both the top and the bottom of the fraction. Now let's find the vertical asymptotes. So these are the remaining terms in the denominator, and we'll set them equal to zero. So we'll have x plus three equals zero, and x minus five equals zero. These then simplify to be x equals negative three, and x equals 5. So x equals negative 3 is a vertical line at negative 3. That's one of our vertical asymptotes. And then x equals 5 is our other vertical asymptote, which is a vertical line at 5. Now, I like to also find the y value that goes with the hole in the graph. So to do this, we're going to substitute in the x, our 2, without the whole term. So we're just taking the x minus 2 out of the function for both the top and the bottom the numerator and the denominator. So I'm just looking at x plus one over x plus three times x minus five. And now I'm gonna substitute in two. So I have two plus one divided by two plus three times two minus five. This simplifies to three over five times negative three. That's three over negative 15, which simplifies to negative one fifth. So altogether, this tells me that the hole in the graph occurs at two negative one fifth. Okay, so those are the vertical asymptotes and the holes. Now let's find the horizontal asymptotes. So here we need to look at the degree of the numerator and the degree of the denominator and compare them. So we need to use some of our knowledge about polynomials. Specifically to find the degrees, we're just going to add the exponents on each factor. So I'm seeing one plus one in the numerator, which is two. And then in the denominator, I'm seeing one plus one plus one, which is three. So here, that degree in the numerator, two, is less than the degree in the denominator, three. So since two is less than three, and we refer to our rules about horizontal asymptotes, this means there is a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. That's a horizontal line at zero. Okay, so I also wanna find our vertical intercepts and our horizontal intercepts, and then write the domain at the very end. So finding intercepts is something we can do with any type of function, and so we're gonna follow the same principles here. For vertical intercepts, these are where x equals zero in comparison to horizontal intercepts where the output value is equal to zero. So vertical intercepts, we have an x value of zero. So I'm just going to substitute in zero for x. So I'm looking at zero plus one times zero minus two divided by zero minus two times zero plus three times zero minus five. Simplifying, I'm getting one times negative two divided by negative two times three times negative five, which is just negative two divided by 30. So negative two over 30 simplifies to negative one fifteenth. And so my vertical intercept is at the point zero, negative one fifteenth. 
This is the same process we always follow for vertical intercepts. The function equation just looks a little different. Okay, now for horizontal intercepts. This is where the f of x values are equal to zero, so the y or the output. I'm going to take my whole function then and set it equal to zero. Now, when we have a fraction that's equal to zero, this is only equal to zero if the numerator or the top part of the fraction is equal to zero. So right, we can't divide by zero, and so a fraction is equal to zero when the numerator is equal to zero. You can also think about taking that whole denominator and multiplying it over to the other side. Zero times that whole denominator is just zero, and so we're left with just the numerator. x plus one times x minus two is equal to zero. If this is equal to zero, the whole fraction is equal to zero, which is what we're wanting. So now I just solve each of these. So I have x plus one equals zero and x minus two equals zero, which gives me the solutions x equals negative one and x equals two. So negative one, zero, and two, zero are my horizontal intercepts. Okay, then lastly, we just have the domain. So the domain is everywhere except when the denominator is equal to zero. And so we specifically take out the holes and the vertical asymptotes. If we look at our denominator, this would be the terms x minus two, x plus three, and x minus five. And we want all of these not equal to zero. Those are the values we're taking out. So this would be x is not equal to two, x is not equal to negative three, and x is not equal to five. Those are the values we're taking out. So I'll write this as negative infinity to negative three, unioned with negative three to two, unioned with two to five, unioned with five to infinity. So I've just taken out negative three, two, and five from my negative infinity to infinity interval, and this is my domain. All right, let's try this again on another example. Let's look at negative three x squared plus 12 x plus 15 all divided by x squared minus 7x plus 10. So in order to do this problem, it's going to be way easier to have the factored form of these polynomials. So I'm just going to go ahead and give it to us now. So the numerator can be factored as negative three times x minus five times x plus one. So you could imagine distributing that all out and you'd get the numerator. And the denominator can be factored as x minus five times x minus two. So we'll use this version of the rational function to answer our questions. Let's start with the vertical asymptotes and the holes. So we remember the vertical asymptotes are where we have a number that's not zero divided by zero, and the holes are when we have zero over zero. So I solve these sort of simultaneously. Looking at the holes, I'm looking for terms that are in both the numerator and the denominator. So specifically that's x minus five, which is in both the top and the bottom. So here, when x minus five equals zero, this is the value x equals five. And so you can imagine if we put in five into this function, we'd get zero over zero. So that's the location of one of our holes in the graph. Now the vertical asymptotes are just where the denominator is equal to zero. So this is my term x minus two. It's sort of what's left over after we've taken care of the holes. So x minus two equals zero gives me x equals two. And this is specifically the equation of our vertical asymptote. So when we substitute in two, we're getting some number divided by zero. That's our vertical asymptote. Now I also like to find the corresponding y value that goes with the hole in the graph. So what we're going to do is just substitute in five to the equation without this term. So I'm looking at negative three times x plus one divided by x minus two, and we're gonna substitute in five for x. So this looks like negative three times five plus one divided by five minus two. This simplifies to negative three times six divided by three, which is just negative six. So the hole in the graph is at the point five, negative six. All right, now we do the horizontal asymptotes. Here we need to compare the degrees of the numerator and the denominator. So here it's sometimes nice to also look at the standard form of these polynomials that aren't factored. So I can pretty easily see the highest degree exponent is two. So I have a two and a two as my exponents. So my degrees are both two. You can also do this by looking at the factors. So we do a one plus one, 
and a 1 plus 1. So these polynomials are both degree 2, and because those are equal, there is going to be a horizontal asymptote at y equals a over b, where a and b are the leading coefficients. So in the numerator, the leading coefficient is negative 3, and in the denominator, the leading coefficient is 1. So my asymptote is at negative 3 over 1, which we'd write just as negative 3. So the horizontal asymptote is at y equals negative 3. All right, now we find the vertical intercepts, the horizontal intercepts, and the domain. So the vertical intercepts occur where x equals 0, and the horizontal intercepts occur where the output, or the y, is equal to 0. So let's start with vertical intercepts. We're just going to substitute in 0 for x. I like to use the standard form because it'll really quickly get rid of things. So I'm just going to do negative 3 times 0 squared plus 12 times 0 plus 15, and then that's divided by 0 squared minus 7 times 0 plus 10. And you can see why this version is nice. We're just getting 15 over 10 since all of those first terms go to 0. So 15 over 10 simplifies to 3 over 2, and so my vertical intercept is at the point 0, 3 over 2. Now for the horizontal intercepts, we want to take our whole function and set it equal to 0. So if this whole fraction is equal to 0, this is going to happen specifically when the numerator is equal to 0. So let's just take our numerator and set it equal to 0. We don't even really need to worry about that negative 3, since negative 3 is never 0. So I'm just looking at x minus 5 and x plus 1. So I have x minus 5 equals 0 and x plus 1 equals 0, which gives me x equals 5 and x equals negative 1. So this tells me my horizontal intercepts occur at 5, 0, and negative 1, 0. Then lastly, we do the domain. This is everywhere except where the denominator is equal to 0. So these are the holes and the vertical asymptotes. I'm specifically looking at my terms x minus 5 and x minus 2. We don't want either of these to be equal to 0. So this tells me that x is not equal to 5, and x is not equal to 2. We'd write this as an interval, as negative infinity to 2, unioned with 2 to 5, unioned with 5 to infinity. And that is our domain. All right, those are two examples of finding information about rational functions. Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.